So I'm ready to get my lye solution going. And this cucumber soap is going to be made with actual cucumber juice, which I made yesterday from the juice of two cucumbers. And what I did was just peel them, chop them up, put them into a food processor, and then I strained the pulp through a cheesecloth. I squeezed really, really hard, and this is how much juice I got. I don't think I got enough for my calculation here because you can use all cucumber juice to replace all of the water, but um, I don't know, for me, I just wanted to use as much as two cucumbers, so that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Whatever extra water I need, I'm going to just use distilled water. So let's see how much cucumber juice I actually got. I have this teared here. Look how pretty that is. <laughs> pretty much cucumber juice popsicles. And the reason why I froze the juice is every time you're working, with fruit or vegetables that have natural sugars in them, you want that water or juice to be ice cold so that the lye doesn't scorch it. Down here. So it looks like we have 297 grams of cucumber juice and I need 453 grams of water. So I'm just gonna minus 297 from 453 and then I'm just going to top it off with water. Looks like I'm gonna need another 156 grams of water. So I'm gonna move this into here. And I'm going to grab some distilled water. And distilled water is good for soaping because it doesn't have those minerals that tap water does and all the impurities. Okay, to this, we're actually going to dissolve some citric acid. I like to add a little bit of a citric acid to all of my soaps because it works as a chelating agent. Helps reduce soap scum and it also helps with the feel of the soap as you're using it in the shower. Just going to add this in here. If you're using full cucumber juice, you wanna to remember to add the citric acid while the cucumber juice is still liquid so that the citric acid can fully dissolve. And I like to use 1% of citric acid for my oil weight. So we're just gonna stir until all that citric acid has been dissolved and the water's clear again. Okay, looks like we have clear water again. We're going to add this to our lye solution bucket. going to measure out our lye and lye is absolutely necessary to make soap and it is corrosive so when you work with it you want to use eye protection like so long sleeves to protect your arms gloves to protect your hands and to protect your lungs because lye fumes are very uncomfortable to inhale I can't do it at all so I like to use this respirator or vent ventilator which I got from Uline, so that I can breathe safely. And yes, this looks ridiculous, but it's necessary. So I've set my lye cucumber juice water solution aside to cool down. And in the meantime, I'm going to get my hard oil and butter mixture ready so that I can start to melt it down. And for the soap, it's going to be a palm free recipe. So it's just gonna be coconut oil and shea butter that I'm going to be melting down. I really love using coconut oil as an oil in my soaps. It adds a nice hardness. It also has a really great cleansing factor. Makes really big, big bubbles. 
I've soaked with unrefined coconut oil that smells a lot like coconut and that smell doesn't transfer to finished soap but it will transfer to lotions and sugar scrub. Next I'm adding some gorgeous shea butter that I got from Baraka Impact. This shea butter is made sustainably by women in Ghana, which is awesome. I have a link to Baraka Impact down below. And on their website, you can learn more about their mission and what they do, but it's fantastic. And this is an unrefined shea butter that I'm using here. In the absence of palm, this adds a nice hardness to the bar but it's also extremely conditioning. The lather that you get from a soap with the amount of shea butter that I am using for this soap is very creamy and luxurious feeling. And we're going to need to melt this down completely before we mix it with our lye solution. So it has completely melted. We're just going to take this off the heat. And then we are going to measure out our soft oils. The majority of the soap is actually olive oil. And I know olive oil is really expensive right now due to an olive shortage. I happen to have a big stock of olive oil, which I bought earlier in the year, so this is before the price of olive oil shot up. But I'm thinking if prices of olive oil were to stay the same, I don't know if I could continue using olive oil as my main oil. Next I have some sweet almond oil, and I usually like to use hemp seed oil for my soaps, but I need to use up this sweet almond oil before it expires. And when I'm swapping oils, I always run it through soap calc so that I know exactly how much lye and water to use because it could be different. And you definitely want to be using the exact amount of lye and water that you need to turn this oil into soap. And the next oil I'm going to use is castor oil and I use this in all of the soaps that I make. You don't want to use a lot of castor oil using too much above, I think it's 8% and you start to get a sticky soap. I like to use castor oil at 5% and that gives my soap some really nice bubbles. And that is all of my soft oils. Now I'm going to combine my soft oils with my melted hard oil and butter. And this will help bring the temperature down of the shea butter and the coconut oil. I like to soap with my oils at below 100 degrees Fahrenheit and also with my lye water below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is the point where I like to add any powdered additives, so clays, or if you're using a powdered milk, this is where I would add it. And the additive that I'm using today is French green clay. I like to add clay to all of my soaps because it adds a really beautiful slip to the soap. It also helps to retain the soap's scent. I usually like to use kaolin clay, but since it's a cucumber soap, I'm trying to stay on the green theme. To disperse the powdered additives, you can use a stick blender to really make sure that you've broken up those big clumps. Next, we're going to measure out our fragrance oil. Because it's a cucumber soap, I'm going to be using a cucumber fragrance oil. I have this cucumber mint fragrance oil from Windy Point Soap Supplies. It smells so good. I love peppermint essential oil. And this is Japanese peppermint. Oh, that's lovely. That is a nice blend. To color the soap, we are gonna be using Golden Shamrock Mica from Fizz Fairy. And this is just a really gorgeous light green color. And for the inside swirl, we're gonna do a darker green. This is Dark Green Mica by Brambleberry. We're gonna do a gold. 
Glitter Gold Mica by Fizz Fairy, and White Diamonds Mica by Winnie Point Soap Supplies. Okay, my lye is ready. My oils are ready. Pretty sure. Let me double check. Yep. Perfect. And now all we have left to do is to start soaping. I have all my colorants over here to the side and my soap mold to the side. I'm using Winston and Walter's soap mold. All right, here we go. So we blended the soap just to trace. I've gotten rid of all of the oil streaks and it's a uniform color. So we're gonna pour half of it into this container. See that the French green clay has kind of made it a little bit muddy. So it's about half. I'm gonna color the soap mainly in Golden Shamrock Mica by Fizz Fairy. And we're going to add about half of our fragrance oil into the soap. And we blend. Okay, I think we have a thick enough trace. I have some water on the side that I'm using to clean my stick blender. And here is Winston and Walter's beautiful soap mold. Gorgeous. Okay, we're just gonna pour the soap into here. Oh, that smells so good. It smells amazing. Smash it a bit. Set this aside while we do our other colors. So I'm going to pour the rest of my fragrance oil into the rest of the soap. Give it a good stir. I'm gonna bring in our other measuring cups. And we are going to add our colors. We're gonna do the dark green mica. For this part, we're going to use the gold for here, and then the white for over here. And we're going to blend everything together using our stick blender. So let us get to pouring. We're going to start with a dark green. We're gonna go into the gold. And then this gray white. I'm gonna take my swirling tool, just go in and break up that first color. I'm gonna use my spoon to really get in there. We're starting to get soap setting in on this guy, so we're gonna have to start globbing it in. It's 
Now we're just going to do our signature waves. Top it off with the gray and the white. And I'm going to finish it off with a bit of a swirl. I'm going to finish this soap off by adding the littlest bit of gold mica. I'm just going to spray it on the top and this will make a really beautiful touch on the soap. It'll give it the prettiest golden sheen. So here is the finished poured soap, and I will say that it did start to accelerate a bit on me, and my suspicion is the, the cucumber juice. I'm really curious about how the colors are going to turn out. It's all a big mystery until the soap gets cut, which I will do, and I'll see you guys then. So let's put the soap to rest, make sure it doesn't get touched by anything else, and should be ready to cut tomorrow. So it is the next day and I decided to bring down an assistant, a guest star for today's video. We have been getting a lot of comments requesting for your presence. So here is the wonderful Kale to help me cut this cucumber soap, which has set up beautifully. I was telling Jerrica that the soap looks very similar to a soap that we're very familiar with. Yeah, it kind of looks like the Georgian Bay soap, doesn't it? Except has green tones instead of blue. Yeah, yeah. From the top, it does look like the Georgian Bay. Sometimes there would be, I don't know, maybe a little less blue in the Georgian Bay. Um, it would come out a little bit more green, and it mm. kind of looks like one of those. Yeah, it has a very soft, sagey green vibe, I think. Yeah, I'm excited to see what, what it looks like on the, inside. the interior looks like. Yep. Did you want to tell people why you're wearing a cowboy hat today? Yeah, <laughs> so today I am taking our eldest niece to her first country concert. We're gonna go see Trace Atkins at the Kitsap County Fair, or the Kitsap Fair. Is this her first concert? No, she's been to a concert before, but just not. Yeah, she's been to a couple concerts, I think, with her dad. Yeah. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, man. Oh, there was a heron that just flew by out there. I saw. Whoa. <laughs> oh, here it comes back again. See it? I do see it. Whoa! I saw you smell it. What do you think of the smell? It smells good. Yeah. It smells good. I think I like just cucumber mint better than whoa, adding the melon. <laughs> Thank you. This hat is actually Jerrica's cowboy hat. <laughs> but I like the way it fits on my head better. The one that I have, we got at a garage sale when we were living up in Calgary. Got them both at garage sales. A little bit too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got them both at garage sales. But mine is a little bit too big. It's really high. And I'm self-conscious that the person behind me isn't going to be able to see over the top of my cowboy hat. <laughs> well, I think at any concert, you're going to run into that risk with you being so tall. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to position this here. What are you laughing at? No, I was just breathing. Oh. <laughs> just breathe. <laughs> just breathe. You remember how to do this, right? Yeah, I remember how to do this. You got this. Okay. So satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. Kale and I went to the fish ladder at Shell. Brewery Park in Tumwater. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at that swirl. We didn't see any salmon running though, but they should be running soon. We were a little early, right? Seems like it, yep. Yeah. There's a lot of factors that can go into when they start running, like rainfall or weather or water temp. That's a good smelling soap. Yeah, I think it's a good one. You see that the, the green that we got is a mix of that mica, but also that French green clay, which 
really mutes the green and keeps it from being too, too, too green. This is cool. We got a little bit of the side, little side swirl there. The soap was setting up a little bit quicker than I expected it to. And that's why you get a lot of the swirls mostly at the top instead of down lower. But mm -hmm. some of these we got some of the swirls lower there. Mmm, it smells amazing. Kayla and I also decided to do a Seattle date night where we saw all of the places that we visited a lot when we first started dating. Yeah. Yeah, so we saw the wheel. We didn't go into the wheel, the big wheel. We realized that the price is about the same as when we went all those years ago. Yeah, I don't think it was that much more to go on the wheel. No. The wheel's like, I don't know, 12, 15 years old now. I remember when the wheel was new. It was a big thing going on in Seattle. Everyone had to ride it. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, were, you weren't somebody until you rode it. <laughs> and for those who don't know, Seattle is actually the place of the first Starbucks. And so we passed by that um, tourist trap or <laughs> that landmark. And we noticed there's always a line to get in, but there was a really big line to get in that day. And yeah. we were wondering why. And it turns out Ed Sheeran was possibly handing out coffee there. Yeah, yeah. We read that like a week later, but yeah. the line was... It was you know, so long. Extraordinarily long. Like, yeah, like Jerrica said, it's usually out the door, yeah. a half block down the yeah. road, but this was like multiple blocks long, yeah. yeah. When we first started dating, I did go, we did go inside, right? Yeah. We, we, we checked it out. We gotten coffee from there. That was fun. They have some cool, what do you call it, merchandise that you can only get there at that location. So I mm -hmm. think it's totally worth the trip or the worth the visit if you're ever in the Seattle area is to check that out because that's also where Pike Place Market is, which is a must see if you are touristing around Seattle. One of the things that we like to do at Pike Place is we like to get fresh seafood there. We like to get some of the, what was it, the shrimp cocktail. Yeah, shrimp cocktails. So good. <laughs> There's something about their cocktail yeah. sauce. It's like, we were like, what is in this? And mm -hmm. we were first thinking like, is there like wasabi in this? But then we realized <laughs> it's probably pretty heavy on hor uh, horseradish. Probably, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's oh, delicious. Yeah. It's so good. It makes your nostrils like tingle. <laughs> yeah. I love that. We also visited the gum wall, which I don't know, has lost its appeal for me over the years. <laughs> I was walking up and down. And I was thinking, this is kind of gross. <laughs> this is people's chewed up gum. And it has a sweet smell on that alley, like gum, <laughs> I was like, ugh, it's kind of icky. So I don't know if I'll visit yep. that place again anytime soon. And lots of bees, lots lots of wasps, you know, because of yeah, the so sweetness gross. and all the gum and all the sugar. Ooh, look at this one, Kale. This is pretty. I like this one. Yeah. I like it. This reminds me more of Muskoka Woods. Yep, I was thinking that too. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of those scents that I, I sold under Quench Bear, I don't know if we'll be bringing back those scent names <laughs> when we reopen, which is sad, but I don't know. I've been kind of tossing around a few ideas about what our signature scents will be, and they'll be similar. We'll have similar notes, but just the names I think will be different, and they'll reflect more my current interests and maybe our current surroundings. I've always wanted to create a brand around living in Washington. So that's an idea. I also really like space. So that's an idea. <laughs> it's, it's a less likely idea, but <laughs> yeah, that's the fun part of, of having a soap business is trying to figure out what your business is going to be specifically targeting and the themes you're going to have for your products and for your branding. I really like this one too. Ooh, pretty. It's like a butterfly. I do think I will keep having fun swirls and bright colors. I think we're gonna stick with that. I, I've never been a big fan of the all natural, uh, more muted colors. I did try a more simplistic branding when I first started, but I don't know if that's really me, which is why we have that really fun logo now with the bear. The layers <laughs> remind me of like looking in a canyon and seeing the different layers of rock. Yeah, a canyon? Over the, I see it too. Actually. Yeah, you look up at the canyon walls, and there's different layers of rock over the eons and epochs. I thought it's epochs. Hey, did we have this <laughs> debate before? 
Google pronounce Google dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> this is so beautiful. See, I love cucumber mint, and I'm really mm. tempted to have a cucumber mint scent that's gonna be there permanently because I love it so much, and I know people love it too. And the fact that this bar has actual cucumber in it is a huge draw. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I can't wait to test these bars out when they're ready in a couple weeks, well, four weeks, um, once they're fully cured to mm -hmm. see what the lather is gonna be like. But anytime you add a vegetable or fruit, an actual vegetable, that ugh, an actual vegetable or fruit to soap, the lather does get bubblier and you'll notice that the bar is just nicer to use. I don't know if that's a placebo effect or, or what, but now that I have used cucumber pulp or cucumber juice in a soap, I definitely think I will start trying more other types of vegetables and fruits and soaps. Yeah, maybe we can grow our own cucumbers next year. Yeah, that's a good idea. We yeah. have some, we don't have a lot of land. We have little patches of garden that we can definitely start doing yeah. that in. So yeah, next year I have a ton of plans. But as for the reopening of the business, I think we're hoping for this fall, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see, yeah. we're still figuring out visa stuff, but I think we're getting closer and closer. We have a few more forms to fill out and send off. So that process is underway. But to those who were requesting Kale's presence, thank you for doing that because I think it's so much fun to have him in the studio and have him help out. So let's have you here more often. Okay, I'll come down, <laughs> cut some soap. Yeah, Kale's a little bit busier these days with his job. When he's free, yep. well, I'll bring him down here. Yep. If you want the recipe for this beautiful cucumber soap with all of the steps, including how I got the cucumber pulp and used it, all of those details are in of what do you call it, like a Patreon post in my Patreon, which is linked down below. And I also do printable recipes that you can print out for your convenience. So you can have it with you when you're making the thing. And you also have the benefit of asking me whatever questions you want directly. I respond to all of my patrons and the people who support me on there. You guys are so awesome. So thank you for your support and your feedback. You are definitely the reason why my channel has continued to evolve and get better and better. So. Thank you. But with that being said, I think we're gonna close this cucumber soap video out. If you like this more casual, chatty type of video, don't forget to comment down below. If you were happy that you saw Kale, also let me know. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Good to see all of you too. Yeah, and we'll see, maybe see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye guys. Oh. <laughs> Did you break? You broke your glove doing that. That's my signature.